Okay, so on the back of your notes, here's what I want you to draw. This is how we um, draw pictures of degrees in math class. So in the real world, they would say north goes straight up, and we would typically do degrees based off of a compass. In the math world, using our calculators, we do degrees based off of the positive x-axis. So we start degree measures over here. So we're going to say that that is zero degrees. Where would, uh, or what would this measurement right here be? 90. So we're going to say 90 degrees is right up there. How many degrees make a straight line? 180. So that's 180. If I go another 90 degrees, what do I have? 270. <laughs> Oops. And then if I go another 90, 360. And 360 is also a complete circle. So zero degrees is like the start of the circle, uh, 360 is the end of the circle, and so that's how we got all those degree measures. Sorry, my bad. All right. Um, we also typically had names for these different quadrants, right? And it's been a while since we referenced them. What number goes with this quadrant? One. one. This is quadrant one. What quadrant? Quadrant is that one too? How about this one? Three. How about this one? Four. How do you write five? Five is just a B. So one, two, three, four. You can use the like regular numbers, one, two, three, four, but most people are going to use Roman numerals for those. They might look at you funny if you said quadrant three and wrote the number three. So typically we're going to do Roman numerals. Um, we, in the past, you guys have worked with triangles, you've worked with like acute angles and obtuse angles, and you've always done stuff measured in degrees. So this year we're going to switch, Colin, into doing some radians as well, right? You texting that to your buddy so they know? We're switching to radians this year. So we're switching to radians this year. Uh, for Math 3, we typically do a lot in degrees and radians. In pre-calc, you start to do mostly radians, a little bit degrees. By the time you get to calculus, you are just completely doing radians. So in math classes, we, um, we start off with degrees because that's like the real world. That's how a lot of people measure things, and then we start to transition. So for radians, we're going to go ahead and draw a similar picture so that we can reference it. And zero radians, we're just going to put zero pi. You could put zero or zero pi, it's the same. So zero radian starts over here. We start in the same spot. And then over here, we have one pi radian. So if this is zero and this is one, what should go in between? What's between zero and one? Point five, half. So they call this pi halves. That's what they call it. Okay. So we go from zero to one. My pi is not squiggly because I'm a math teacher and I get lazy. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. You'll notice a lot of math teachers do that. Uh, and then from here, if this is from zero to one, then this would be from one to two. So zero pi and two pi are in the same spot. In fact, if you compare these, you can see that pi is the same thing as 180 degrees, and 2 pi is the same thing as 360 degrees, they're in the same spot. Okay. So if this is 0, and that's 1 half, and that's 1, then this would be 1.5, which if we write it as fractions would be 3 halves. We stick the pi on top, so we'd call it 3 pi halves. So, so think, about, think about fractions, 0, one half, one, one and a half, two. Zero, one half, one, one and a half, two. And I just, I wrote three halves because I was writing it as an improper fraction, and that's how they typically write it, so that's how we're going to write it, okay? But if you need to think of it as one and a half, that's okay. Or if you need to think of it as 1.5, that's okay. All right? Uh, since we are not maybe super awesome at decimals or fractions. Teachers, please pardon this interruption. 
So since a lot of us are not super comfortable with fractions, we're going to go ahead and write some decimals next to these. Not because everyone uses decimals, because nobody uses decimals on these. We're going to write some decimals because it's our first time seeing it, and that might make us a little bit more comfortable since we're learning something new. Okay. So what decimal should I put here? 0.5. So I'm going to write 0.5 pi right next to this just so I don't forget. That's what that is. Uh, this was 1 pi, right? What should I put down here? 1.5. 1.5. So that's going to be a little bit helpful. And then over here we had the 0 pi and the 2 pi. I'm just going to remember that. If you were to do this in a calculator, you would not type in the pi. At hardly ever because as soon as you type in pi you start multiplying by 3.14 blah 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 you get nasty decimals so as much as we can we're actually gonna leave pi out of it we're gonna stick pi on the end but other than that we're not gonna mess with pi too much okay so if you look at the first part of your worksheet the first thing it asks you to do is graph a 60 degree angle so if we are looking and this is degrees so we're looking at this first one that's what we're comparing it to which quadrant would a 60 degree angle show up in? One. Quadrant one. Would it be in the middle of quadrant one? Would it be closer to zero degrees, closer to 90 degrees? Closer to 90, closer to 90 yeah. So that's where we're going to draw it. We're going to say this is going to be closer to 90. And then we draw, we show that this is how I'm measuring the angle. That's 60 degrees right there. And in your notes, they, they gave a name to this side right here. Anyone know what that name is? It starts with a T. Terminal. terminal. It's the terminal side. I'm going to go ahead and label this as the terminal side. So there's two ways we can phrase this. I can say that angle lies in quadrant one. Or I can say the terminal side of that angle lies in quadrant one. Either way, I'm going to think of that as a quadrant one angle. <coughs> All right, 215. Which quadrant do you guys think 215 degrees should lie in? In the third. In the third. Should it be in the middle of the third quadrant? No. A little bit before the middle. I would agree with that. So 225, if you do the math, if you take um, 180 and 270 and you add them together and divide by 2 to find the middle, you're going to find that the middle is 225. 215 is a little bit less than that, so I'm going to go a little bit less than the middle. And I'm going to draw this around. Here's my 215 degree angle right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and label this as my terminal side right here. So if they said, what quadrant does the terminal side lie in, what would you say? Three. Quadrant three. I want you to take a moment and see how you feel about number three. Do you agree with them? Do you disagree with them? Take a moment. Take a moment, talk in your groups. All right, so what are we thinking? Do we agree? Do we disagree? We disagree. Okay, now how, how is number three different than the other two? It's negative. So if the other ones... If the other ones go this way around the circle and they're positive, which way do you think a negative angle would go? It would go the opposite way, right? Okay, let's, let's add to our notes on the back of our page and see if we can figure this out. So when we are drawing or when we are measuring angles, where do we always start? I think I heard it. Zero. We always start at zero. So I'm going to say start at zero. All right. Um, we already did number one and two, so we know which way to go if it's a positive angle. We start at zero and we go this way. How do they usually call that? Counterclockwise. All right. So go counterclockwise. Um, which is left, if it throws you off to think of counterclockwise versus clockwise, that really means to the left. All right. Now, does number three seem like it should follow that same instruction? No, because no, if, we, if we did that, then we'd be drawing positive 100 degrees, right? 
So what's the exception to this rule? Negative. Yeah, if the graph is negative, we go backwards. So I'm going to say go backwards for negative angles, which is clockwise. Or if clockwise messes with your brain, then you could say to the right. Okay, so that means we do not want to go this way. So we go, yeah, so if we go backwards, we've got zero, here's negative 90. Am I done with negative 100 yet? No. No. So it should go a little bit further, 10 degrees further. So what do we think about number three? It's right, yeah, so I'm going to say check. Check, that one was right. I'm going to draw this, yep, you guys got it, negative 100. My goal was not to trick you, it was to make you think about the difference. Yeah. Okay. Now we got some fraction ones, so am I still on the degrees quadrants? No, we're going to look at radians now, these are radians. I can tell from two things. The first reason I can tell is because they do not have a little bubble. You notice all the degree problems have a bubble, bubble, bubble. So radians will not have a bubble. The second thing that helps me is I can see there's a pi in there. Radians do not have to have a pi, but they often do. I'd say like 95% of the time they've got a pi in there. So that means we're gonna expect to see that. So five pi fourths, I have to figure out if that fraction is on the top of the circle because the fraction is between 0 and 1, or if the fraction is on the bottom of the circle because it's between 1 and 2. So if you think about the fraction 5 fourths, it's, it's, that? it's going to be between 1 and 2. Yeah, 5 is a little bit bigger than 4, so that means that this fraction is bigger than 1. So because we often do not like fractions, let's go ahead and see what that decimal is. That could help us. So let's type 5 divided by 4. See what that decimal would be. One point twenty five. So we know we're not gonna we're gonna keep going past this, right? We got zero to point five to one, we gotta keep going. How much further should I go to get to one point twenty five? One point five is down here. Halfway, yeah, exactly in the middle. Okay, so when I draw it over here on my paper, I'm gonna go point five, one, one point two five right there. And I'm not going to write this as 1.25 because that's not what they wrote it as. I'm going to say this is 5 pi fourths. And I'll go ahead and label this as my terminal side. So if they asked you where the terminal side lies, what would you say? Quadrant 3. Yes. Uh, 7 pi ninths, is that the top half of the circle between 0 and 1 or the bottom half between 1 and 2? The top half between 0 and 1. What should we do with that fraction? Divide it, find the decimal, right? So what is it? 0. 0.7, okay. So 0. 0.7, where should that be? Quadrant 2. Is it 0. 0.70, 0. 0.7? No, it's 0. 0.7. Point seven 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 seven. So point seven five would be exactly in the middle, right? So point seven 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 should be where? A little, yeah, a little bit past the middle, just a little bit over, right? So I got my middle right in here. I'm going to go a little bit past the middle, and I'm going to say, okay, that is seven pi ninths. And where does the terminal side lie? Quadrant two. Quadrant two. see if you can do number six. We got another negative angle. It means we got to go backwards. 
So see if you can figure out where number six should go. All right, what what decimal did we get? Okay, and it's negative, right? So negative yeah. one point five seven. So which quadrant did you guys end up in? So we've got negative point five. One. Negative yeah, one. Yeah. Negative one point five. Yeah. And, then and a smidge further. Uh -huh. okay. So quadrant one. So negative eleven five seven. <laughs> Hurting your brain a little bit? Yeah. Um, is it going to get harder? You already know. These, yeah. I, we're going to have some numbers that are a little bit too big. But I think I think today is not too bad actually. We're gonna get we're gonna work on it slowly, get used to it. Every little thing so gonna be a like does the um does that rely on what what way to go? Because I every time I look at it, I want to put it on the inside of it, but I don't know if You wanna go this way, you mean? Yeah, so if I went this way, you put that this way. Yeah. And you notice I'm drawing this as I do it. Yeah. All right. The next one. This one is probably going to mess with your brain a little bit. So we are, you're going to write this one on your notes. Okay, so we're going to the back page of our notes again. And it's in degrees, so go ahead and draw this picture. I did mine in pen, so I can just repeatedly use it and erase the pencil every time. Look how tricky I am. All right, so you're going to go ahead and draw that, because number seven is a 735 degree angle, and that is quite a bit different than what we have on our circle, right? Okay. Okay, we ready to start drawing 735? Yep. Okay, so I know for a 735 degree angle, I know I got to go all the way around, right? Yes, ma'am. So I go all the way around, that's 360 degrees. Am I done? No. No. Um, what if I go another 90? How far am I? I don't know. Use your calculator. 360? <laughs> 450. 450, okay. If I go another 90, that's 450. Have I gone far enough? Can I go another 90? 540. 540, okay. Oh, did I go backwards? I'm sorry. Good. Good catch. Good catch. All right. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, Lord. All right, let's try this again. Are we ready? Okay. So I go around. There's my 360. Okay. And then here's my 450. Here's my 540. Here's my 630. Here's my 630. 720. 720. And then just a little bit more. How how much further did we go? We were at 720. How many more degrees did we go? 15. We went 15. That's how many degrees we went to get to the 735. So what that means is that a 15 degree angle and a 735 degree angle are actually in the same spot. Do you guys see that? Yeah. A 15 degree angle and a 735 degree angle are in the same spot. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, I want you to type 15 in your calculator and add 360 to it. 375. So that means we've got a 15 degree angle, a 375 degree angle, and a 735 degree angle, and all of those are in the exact same spot. Right? So first quadrant? Mm -hmm. They're all in the first quadrant. What if I took 15 and subtracted 360? 
What's 15 subtract 360? Negative 345. That would also be in the same spot. You're just going backwards. That makes sense? So there's a name for this. Does anyone know the name for that? It starts with a C. Uh, <laughs> They're coterminal, coterminal angles. So coterminal means this line right here is called the terminal side. So a coterminal angle means the terminal side is in the same spot. And you get coterminal angles by adding 360, adding 360, adding 360, adding 360, adding 360 or subtract 360, subtract 360, subtract 360, subtract 360. Does that make sense how we get those? Okay. We're going to add that to the notes on the back so that we don't forget what that means. So right here I'm going to say coterminal angles. Like how many, which, like which answer you're supposed to get? Yeah. So in these types of problems, um, it will often give you like a number, and it will say find one positive coterminal angle and find one negative coterminal angle. And most people would just like add 360 once, subtract 360 one, once, and then be like, okay, those are my answers. And students who are like, Miss Rice, I hate you. I'm going to make you work for this. They add 360 21 times and see if I can figure out they actually got it right. You know what I'm saying? Because I didn't give you, I didn't tell you specifically which answer I'm looking for. So it means you got a lot of options for which answer you want to put. Does that make sense? There's not, there's not one set of answers, there's a lot. We call them infinitely many. So when you're looking for coterminal angles, there are infinitely many coterminal angles. You could be 76, still add in 360 repeatedly, get another answer. Just keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Turn 76, turn 77, you're still hitting enter, 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 360, 360, and you could keep doing answers for the rest of your life. <laughs> yeah, let's not. That sounds boring, right? So we already did a problem with the degrees. We said if we're doing degrees, we should add or subtract a whole circle. So we're adding or subtracting 360 degrees. That's how we get some other answers. What do you guys think we would do if we were um, in radians? What's a, full, what's a full circle in radians? 2 pi. Yeah, so for radians, instead of adding or subtracting 360 degrees, we're going to add or subtract 2 pi because that's what a full circle is in radians. All right, so in your notes, all the notes you took last night, I'd say the back side, this part that we just added, is probably going to be the most important of the notes because the notes last night was just a lot of vocabulary and a lot of like nitty gritty details and this stuff is kind of like the practical stuff that you'll use a lot. These things are the practical things. Okay, so now if we look at number seven, which quadrant was um, 735 in? First. First quadrant, okay. All right, now they say that negative 132 should be in the second quadrant. I want you guys to look, draw a sketch if you need to, see if you agree or disagree. <laughs> We're looking at number eight, the check me problem. They think it's in quadrant two. We just want to see if we agree or disagree. Can you make a video? Sure. I'm the last one to say. My name is Missy. You gotta do it with the guys out there so I can watch that. Okay. So, so are we in agreement? Quadrant two. No, it's quadrant three. three. How do you know it's in quadrant three? So we're going backwards, right? So we got negative 90. And then should we go all the way to two, negative 180 and go past it to get to quadrant two? No. They went too far. So how far should we go? 
negative 90. A little bit further, negative 132 is going to be somewhere in there. So what quadrant is that in? Third. That's definitely a third quadrant angle. So <laughs> go ahead and work on these other three. You do not have to draw a sketch, but drawing a sketch might help. If you're not sure where the angle is, drawing a sketch might be helpful. So what did we get for this one? Quadrant three. How about this one? Quadrant one. How about this one? Quadrant two. Okay. Uh, so this one, I don't know, we're not very comfortable with fractions, so what should we do instead? Decimals. Decimals. So that fraction, 7 eighths, is that going to be on the top part or the bottom part? Top. Top. How do we know what's on the top? <coughs> yeah, 7 is a smaller number than 8, right? Uh -huh. So when you do 7 divided by 8, you're going to get a decimal that's smaller than 1. That tells us it's the top half of the circle. What decimal did you get? 0 0.875. Okay, so let's look at this. We got from 0 to 0 0.5. And then if I go all the way over here, I'm going to 1. Should I go all the way to 1? No. No. How far should I go? Like a little, a little past. A little past halfway, right? So what quadrant are we in? Two. Quadrant 2. All right, let's figure out our decimal for number 13. What's our decimal for 13? Wait, is it 0.75? Negative 0.75, because that matters, right? Why does it matter? Yeah, you go backwards. We got to know if we're going backwards. So negative 0.75. So if I go backwards, I got negative 0.5. And how much further do I got to go? A little bit, yeah. 0.75 would be halfway, right? No. Between we got negative 0.5 and negative yeah. 1.75 would be in between. So what quadrant are we in? Quadrant three. Okay. All right. Go ahead and see if you can do the other one. So we're looking at the decimal, and then we're using the decimal to help us. Now. All right, <laughs> we are adding some more to our notes on the back page because this is where we're keeping all the like the really important stuff. So when we convert back and forth between radians and degrees, from radians and degrees, just going back and forth, there were two fractions that we used. What are the two fractions? Pi over 180 degrees. And what was the other one? It's very similar to this one. 180 over pi. So pi over 180 and 180 over pi. Those are the two different fractions that we use to convert things. Okay? All right, so we're going to use this to help us do number 17. So on number 17, I've got a 45 degree angle. I need to multiply it by something so that my final answer ends up being in radians. Do, do radians have a little bubble in them for degree? No. So that means this degree bubble needs to cancel. How do I cancel a degree bubble that's on top? I gotta have a degree bubble on the bottom, right? Because we've learned before tops and bottoms can cancel out, right? So that means that 180 degrees has to go on the bottom because I need this bubble to cancel with that bubble and then I know I'm in radians. So which fraction am I using if I have to have 180 on the bottom? Pi over 180. Pi over 180. Now I do not want to type pi in my calculator, it'll give me a nasty decimal. So what I'm gonna type into my calculator is 45 times 1 over 180. 45 times 1 over 180. 0.25. And we're going to take that decimal and turn it into a fraction. You guys remember how to do that? Hit one fourth. You might have it memorized, or you can hit the math button. And option one says frac, and it will take whatever decimal you have and turn it into a fraction. 
So we, we typed in 45 multiplied by 1 divided by 180. And we got 0.25, which we know is 1 4. Now, I did not type the pi in, so that means I have to take my fraction right here. I have to stick a pi on the top because I did not type it in. So that's the answer. You can write 1 pi over 4, or you can just say pi over 4. Right. Look at number 18. Does it look like they set up the problem correctly? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They, they didn't write their bubbles, but if they had bubbles written there, then the bubbles would have canceled. That tells you you're doing a good job. And did they get the right fraction when they typed it in? They did? Okay, so we agree with that. That's a good answer. Okay, go ahead and do the other two. What did we get for 72? Oh, let me do two over five. Two, pi. yeah, two pi over five. Deja, <laughs> did you get 20? Yes. What did you get? Three pi over two. Three pi over two. And then 11 pi over 20. All right. You can write it as you go. All right. Let's look at number 22. So I'm taking pi over 2, and it needs to be in degrees, and so what thing has to cancel out? The pi has to cancel, so I know I need a pi on the bottom. If the pi is on the bottom, what should be on the top? 180. So when I look at this one, I can see that this pi and this pi cancel. And the thing that I'm going to type into my calculator, i got to remember that this was a fraction. I'm going to type in 1 half times 180. 1 half times 180. 90, 90 degrees. Make sure you put your bubble on it, right? It's got to have a bubble to be in degrees. If we look at number 24, did they set up number 24 correctly? Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So 2 pi over 5, 180 over pi, they canceled out the pies. <coughs> what should you type into your calculator? <laughs> so 2 over 5, 2 fifths, <laughs> times 180, does it equal 70? 72. It equals 72. <laughs> What's the Wait, so. <laughs> <laughs> so the numbers also be right? So these numbers right here, you're typing them in as a fraction, or you could type in a division. 2 divided by 5 is the same thing as the fraction 2 fifths. Mm -hmm. Anyone got number 23? Oh, me? 135. Okay, go ahead and see if you can get the last two. Number 26 is going to be a not very nice answer. You can write that as a decimal when you get there. That's not a big deal. All right, you guys. We got one last thing. One last thing. Go ahead and flip the page. <laughs> so we, we talked about coterminal angles, but we haven't done it yet. So if your problem is in degrees, how do you find a coterminal angle? Yeah, if your answer, if the problem is in degrees, you're going to add 360 degrees or subtract 360 degrees. So to find the positive coterminal angle, I'm going to go ahead and add. So what do we get when we add? 470. And to get the negative coterminal angle, they have 250, you said? Okay. All right, uh, if your problem is in radians, then what should you add or subtract? 2 pi. 2 pi. So I'm going to say I have 7 pi eighths 
plus 2 pi. Now, earlier I said we're going to avoid typing the pi into the calculator, so what I want you to do is just type in 7 eighths plus 2. So it's kind of like combining like terms, they're both in terms of pi. So I'm just going to say 7 eighths plus 2. Go ahead and type that in, tell me what you get. 23.875. And yeah, let's make sure it's a fraction, so we're going to get 23 over 8. And since I did not type in the pi, what should I stick on my fraction? The pi. I gotta stick it in there since I did not use it in the calculator. And I need to do the negative version as well, so I'm gonna say 7 pi eighths minus 2 pi. And again, I'm not gonna type the pi in my calculator, it's gonna make my answers real messy if I do that. So I'll just type in 7 eighths minus 2, negative 9 over 8. And then I make sure that I stick the pi on top of the fraction. So why couldn't you turn the You can. You can. So, I, hey guys, I had a good question. And the question was, like, if we feel more comfortable with degrees, then is it okay if I just take this and convert it into degrees and then find coterminal angles? And the answer is yes, but your answer has to match the problem. So if this problem is in radians, your answer has to be in radians. Okay. That means if you convert it to find your coterminal angles, then you have to convert them back. And that's just a lot of work if all you had to do was type it in your calculator. 7 eighths plus 2 is pretty easy to type in. Okay, So you are welcome to convert if you feel more comfortable with that. If you um, are OK with doing it this way, I just wanted you guys to be able to see it. Okay, All right. Uh, the rest of the packet is similar to the stuff that we've already done. So the rest of it is just working on that. Um, 5 through 12, I want you to scribble out. We're not going to do these. Yeah. Woo <laughs> All right. Go ahead and flip the page over. So we scribble. We scribble these out. Flip the page over. Scribble out 29 through 36. Okay. Flip the page over. We are not going to scribble it out. We are going to write extra credit. Extra credit on the back page. Okay. So at this point, we are just working. You guys know how to do all of it. So now we're just practicing. Okay. Can you go back to this one? No, you can go to my left. I couldn't see it. Tell me this. 